in uh, February of 2012, I got a chance to visit the uh, Riga uh, Technical University, uh, the electronics and telecommunications uh, facilities they have there. This is where they house the Latvian Electronic Equipment uh, Testing Center. This is a project of uh, between the University of Riga and the uh, European Union. Um, here's some equipment under test. This is a, a, a on audio console. And here they're, they're probing it. They're actually touching the metal parts, uh, probing it with four kilovolts at a time. Uh, pass that test, okay. Uh, this is a test where they actually touch plastic parts with 10 kilovolts. So that, uh, that probe there is kind of like a stun gun. It, it has a 10 kilovolts potential uh, on its metal tip there. And uh, they're seeing if it causes... Uh, is what, uh, eight, 8 kilovolts on the probe? That's it. It said 8. It was actually up to uh, 10 kilovolts. They have to uh, touch uh, buttons over and over again and see if, uh, if it causes any problem at all when, the, when they discharge that or make that 10 kilovolts available there. Next, we moved over to the, uh, to the chamber, uh, the EM chamber. Um, we're going to put the equipment uh, in, turn it on, and point a, a calibrated antenna at it to read whatever uh, RF products are coming out of the equipment. These are usually caused by clock circuits and switching circuits, especially in you know CPU-based and DSP-based uh, electronic circuits. Um, and so they're setting the gear up, and they're just about to turn, it, to turn it on. That table that they're setting it up upon actually stands on a turntable. You can barely see it on, in the floor. The whole floor is able to turn. The testing that they were doing today... Um, was not for final certification. It was just a preliminary test to see, okay, what else about this equipment do we need to take care of? So there's the uh, the antenna. Um, looks like a very specialized, uh, some kind of log periodic antenna. Uh, it, it's accurate over a very wide frequency range, or at least its accuracy is known, its calibration is known. Uh, and it's, it connects to a uh, Roden Schwartz uh, spectrum analyzer uh, back in the, in the testing room. They can uh, move that antenna up and down on that uh, stand uh, as necessary. There you go. There's the antenna pointing at the equipment that's that's going to be under under test in just a few minutes. We've got to shut the door, um, leave the room, and when we shut this door, that room is is entirely sealed off. You can't hear a radio station or your cell phone. Certainly doesn't work in that room. By the way, that's the that's the uh, the test equipment room. It also closes up to keep anything out. And there's the seal on the door. You see, it's a very, very good RF uh, radio magnetic uh, uh, shield uh, with all that finger stock around there. Okay, so here's the uh, here's the computer gear that um, uh, runs the uh, the test equipment. Uh, the left hand screen is uh, talking to a Roden Schwartz spectrum analyzer that has a bunch of automatic uh, routines built into it. And the the uh, screen in the middle there. Uh, is a camera back to the room. Uh, if they were rotating the table uh, on the turntable, then they could see it rotate. Um, and they can also see which polarization the uh, antenna is set to. There's a still photograph of the Roden Schwartz spectrum analyzer and a lot of equipment that uh, is associated with it. And here the, the test goes underway. Uh, today's tests were checking for any emitted radiations between 30 megahertz and uh, 1 gigahertz. So uh, it's it's going to uh, and and the 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 um, the uh, receive bandwidth uh, of the the spectrum analyzer uh, excuse me the resolution bandwidth of the res, uh, spectrum analyzer this, these are all fixed uh, items for the test they they know the standards set by the EU uh, for later CE certification uh, they know what what these are and they're all programmed in the in the Roden Schwartz so here's the computer. Um, uh, output or what it's displaying that comes the data that comes from the Roden Schwartz uh, spectrum analyzer and uh, you can see the red line across the top there that is the don't exceed line uh, for a certain class of certification um, after they got done with the first round of tests they went and uh, m rearranged the equipment so as to see okay is is the the spikes that we're getting is it from one piece of gear or from the cable or from the other piece of gear and uh, so they're just rearranging the test to get some idea. Okay, where do we have to go do the work to reduce the uh, the electromagnetic radiation spikes in a few areas? And after hiding one of the pieces of gear from the antenna, well, the uh, the spectra is down considerably in most areas, although there still uh, are a, a spike or two above the red line uh, over on the left. So here's the um, remote rotation of the antenna. They can turn it from vertical to horizontal polarization. And uh, and test the gear right there, um, and they're going they're going to run the whole series of tests over again. 
once the test is run, they, the computer actually identifies the, the places that uh, the peaks that may be over the line and goes and retests those areas with a, a narrower resolution bandwidth to see if it'll pass the second time. So there we go. That was at the Riga Technical University Electronic and Telecommunications Facility.